Hello, Catadactyl here. Uh, today I'm doing a book review for The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. So this is an incredibly quaint... <laughs> I meant to say quaint and sweet and it came out quaint. Uh, yeah, so it, I guess it's a very quaint book. <laughs> What <laughs> it is very, very sweet. It's saccharine sweet. There are a lot of cliches and I didn't think I would like it because it follows around three men. So I didn't exactly know how I felt about that because generally I don't really like Building Roman, which is over the boy's journey. Uh, however, by the end of the book, it just got me in, right in the feels. So, regard I know that there's a lot of people out there that said this book is boring or this book tries too hard. And while I can see definitely where they're getting that from, I feel like I didn't really connect with the book till the last third of it. So yeah, let's just get in right into like why I did like it. So the main character of this book is Monsieur Jean Perdu, which translated is John Lost. Which, okay, it's not that clever, but it's it fits pretty well. So he is kind of this guy who, his, the great love of his life 20 years ago left him and she left him a letter and instead of reading it he puts it in a desk and recently he let someone borrow the desk and the letter comes to be an issue again um, and he reads it and he decides to set off to find his great love and one of the great things and I think why my friend gave it to me was because he owns a book barge in France so a book barge is awesome. It's a barge and it's full of books, like around 8,000 of them I think he says in the book. And he calls it the Literary Apothecary, which is also amazing. I think this book should have been called the Literary Apothecary because, I mean, it just rolls off the tongue. It's so great. Um, but he, he basically can read people and prescribe them books to solve whatever issue they're having. The only person he can't is himself. So he goes on this grand journey and he picks up people along the way. A young man who's also a writer named Max and then another man called Cunio who's searching for his own love um, or his own version of love anyway. So it follows them throughout the book and the main problem with Purdue is that he's grieving. For large portions of the book he's grieving for the love he lost, the love he can't find, things, chances that he'll never get again, that he let go, um, chances that because he's old he'll never have and there's grief for each of the characters that they meet a grief in some form the book is largely about grieving and overcoming grief in different ways it is quite heavy on emotions and crying and literary references there's even in the back of the book a John Jean Perdue's emergency literary pharmacy and it lists I think all the books that the character would recommend or that was mentioned in the book and so it's very book heavy which I found very cute um, a lot of the books I have not read myself so I was like oh I should read them if you like France and if you like books and if you like books about pulling yourself up after something devastating has happened and finding who you were meant to be instead of who you were this would be a great book for you it is very feely and at first I was like, I'm not feeling those feels, like you're not going to get me. This is a three man journey, not falling for it. And then in the end I was like, oh, sucker punch, oh I'm dead. So <laughs> it did get me. So if you're going to start reading it and you're like a third of the way through and you're like, oh I don't like this, then at least just give it a go. Because for me it was definitely worth it and I do recommend it. It is cute, it is super sweet. but it also will hit you in the feels. So yeah, uh, let me know if you read it or have read it, what you think, if you agree with me, if you don't agree with me, let me know. And thanks for watching. See you, bye.